Hello folks and welcome back. In this lecture we'll be covering the instructions for your player response essays. And so basically what's going to happen in this course, we'll play a game, or in the case of uh, uh, Life is Strange, you'll play an episode. I think there's maybe four or five episodes in that. And each time we do that, we'll take some time to write a basically a short essay uh, based on that gameplay experience. Uh, so I'll step through here what's I expect you to put in those essays the type of questions you should be thinking about uh, as you play the games. All right, let's see, moving on then. Uh, so the theory, a little bit about why we're doing this, why this particular way. You know, there's lots of ways you could go about writing and analyzing a game. Uh, my approach to this is based on a scholar named Tomer Thobbit, who has written a book called Video Game Narrative and Criticism, Playing the Story. So you can buy this book if you like or get it from the library, but it's, uh, I think last time I checked, nearly $100. Uh, so I thought I would just sort of summarize his approach here. But uh, if you do want to delve more deeply into the philosophy behind this, the theories that, you know, basically argue for why this is a good method, uh, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, but we'll just be uh, basically applying his uh, theories that he's come up with. And uh, by the way, he's basing his theory on something called reader response theory. So the same theory could apply to a work of literature, a movie, a film, whatever. You just happen to be talking about video games here. Now, the key to this theory is that it's focused on your subjective experience. So we want to know, like, not just what a player can expect, but what, what did you, what happened to you as you played this game? And how do you feel about what happened? Now, why did you make the choices you did uh, during the game. So it's a very subjective, personal account. It's not, uh, we'll get into more about what it's not in a second here, uh, but it's based on the idea that the player, you, are essential to the meaning of a game, for only in the playing experience does the game come alive. And to just take a minute to think about what they're saying here, uh, the game, whether this be Life is Strange, uh, Undertale, uh, the longest journey, whatever. Uh, in some sense, that game only exists as you are playing it, right? If it's just, you know, the disc that it's on, the cartridge, the sitting on your hard drive somewhere, uh, that doesn't really mean anything, right? It's only when you load it up and start playing it does that game come alive and start to have a meaning. Uh, so that's pretty cool to think about that. And if you ever do a... Any, any theater or stage plays, this comes up all the time. And like, what is Hamlet? Uh, what is uh, uh, Macbeth? You know, is that, are you talking about the script? Are you talking about a summary of the story? Um, can you have a film version? Uh, or is it really Hamlet is that, that thing that happens, that event when you're at a theater and it's happening right in front of your eyes and it's <laughs> sort of live? <laughs> you know, I guess that's the, the thought is, can, can you have a, is it still Hamlet if it's not live? You know, and actually watching it in the moment. That's a little bit far out, I guess, but, you know, I think that's a good example because I think you would agree if you had gone to see plays, that even if you see the play on one day and go back, you know, and Hamilton's a big, a big example here. So if you saw Hamilton once, you had one experience, right? If you went to see it again, uh, that would be a different experience. Uh, you know, there's all these factors that come into play each time. Uh, the performances won't be identical, right? You won't be sitting next to the same. <laughs> the audience will be different. Uh, so basically, it's different every time. And I would say the same is true for most games. Now, even if you try to go exactly and do exactly what you did the first time, there's always little differences that happen. And if nothing else, you might be in a different mood, uh, which can affect your gameplay experience. So I'm just saying all this in a way to... It's here to show, shed some light on why we're approaching uh, games this way. So what are we not doing? What does a player response essay not? Uh, so it's not a summary of the game's storyline. And unfortunately, this is what most people assume that I want. Uh, so they just they get on Wikipedia or they look at the back of the box and they just sort of give me the summary of what the game story is about. Uh, that's not what we're looking for. You know, we can, again, I can just get on Wikipedia and look at that. Uh, Moby games. Uh, we don't need to be re uh, just summarizing a, a game story uh, 
two, it's not a review, so you're not saying this is a good game, this is a bad game, uh, the graphics are three out of five, uh, the, uh, the characters are two out of four or whatever. Uh, that's not what we're doing. And not knocking that, you know, that's a legitimate uh, way to go about this, just not what, it's just not what we're doing. Uh, I'm not really concerned about how the game compares to similar games. Uh, that's not, again, not really in our domain here. And it's uh, certainly not a strategy guide. Uh, so those are all four things you're probably used to seeing if you read about games. Uh, but we're not doing any of these things. You're not saying, how do, how do I win the longest journey? Or what are the, uh, life is strange? What's some good ways to get ahead? You know, we're not worried about that. We're just focusing in on your subjective experience. So you'll be thinking about these six key questions, hopefully as you're playing the game, so that later on you can come back to these in your essay. And by the way, this will be an essay in traditional format, introduction, body, conclusion. Uh, so even though I'm giving you these questions, don't, don't assume this will be a question and answer format, uh, just a list of answers to these questions. Uh, instead, just these questions will inform your essay, which means they will give you ideas about what to put in there. Uh, it doesn't have to be in this order. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly set up like this. But these are just the things to be thinking about. Uh, so one, how did the game challenge me? So there, there must be some obstacles in the game, certain points where you have to make decisions. Uh, hopefully, and you know, in the better games, these decisions aren't always clear. Like, what's the right answer? A lot of times, if it's a good game, you really have to put some thought into, well, what should I do here? Right, or how do I get to how do I get beyond this this point? And so that's all part of the game challenge. So it makes a game a game, instead of a movie or a novel or something where you just turn the page. Right here, there will be some kind of challenge that you have to overcome, not to proceed. Uh, question two: How did I respond? How did I respond to the challenge? So again, this is focuses on you. So yeah, there might be there might be three or four options there, but you picked one. Uh, so why did you pick that? You know, also, how do you feel about that? Were you frustrated? Were you excited? Uh, were you invested? Were you just kind of ambivalent about it? You didn't really care which, which way you went? Were you curious about some of those other options? Uh, question three, what could and couldn't I do? Uh, so again, this comes back to the nature of a game. Uh, a lot of these games, you might have two or three options there, some dialogue, some things you could say, but then there might be some things that you would, maybe you would have liked to have said, but that wasn't an option. Uh, or maybe there is, uh, maybe there's, no matter what you do, one of the characters dies. Uh, there's just no way to, no way to make it so that the character doesn't die. I said that'd be an example here of something that you couldn't do. Uh, but a lot of games will have uh, many different things you can do. Uh, if you go from a game like a uh, like a lot of first-person shooter games, first-person shooter games, basically you're just shooting things <laughs> uh, versus games like Minecraft, where there's a lot of other stuff you can do uh, besides just run around killing stuff. Uh, question four, what does my response mean? So again, you're thinking about those choices you made. Why did I choose to save this character over this character? Uh, why did I choose uh, uh, not to not to steal anything, uh, even though some games you can steal, you can pickpocket. <laughs> you chose not to do that, even though you could do that. Uh, some games will basically let you be as evil as you want to be. Uh, most people don't do evil things, even though it's just a game, right? So you get to be thinking about, well, why did I, what is it about my personality that made me make this choice instead of that choice? So we're really getting already into this reflective idea. Uh, how did the game react to my response? So this is getting at how the game can kind of manipulate you as well. So the game is kind of sometimes urging you in a certain direction, pushing you towards certain decisions. Uh, you might do some evil things in a game and then find out you're being punished. Uh, right? The uh, In Skyrim, if you played that, you know, the people in the town were treat you differently uh, if you <laughs> depending on what you're doing <laughs> as if you're just going around killing everybody uh, the game will basically punish you for that or, or attempt to uh, other games are very sort of hands-off you know you could just do whatever you want there's not a lot of uh, reaction uh, this also gets into the importance in game narrative 
of the uh, importance of making decisions and having that game respond to the decisions. A lot of games get heavily criticized if you make these choices and it doesn't really have any impact on the gameplay. Uh, or if they feel like you know they, everything's been building up to this choice, but then no matter what I do, I end up with the same ending. Uh, so things like that really bother people. Uh, but here, again, we're just thinking about you personally, your thoughts on how that game reacted to you, that decision. You know, how do you feel about the way that played out? And then finally, what happens when I replay the game? So you don't necessarily have to play these games multiple times. Uh, in this course, we don't have that kind of time. Uh, but you could just think about this. You know, maybe next time, you, if you were to play it again, maybe you'd choose, make some different choices and see how those play out. Uh, a lot of the... If you ever play games on Steam or Xbox, uh, or I guess on play, PlayStation, uh, but they have these things called achievements, and they a lot of these achievements are based on going back in, playing it a different way, uh, basically seeing all of the content in that game, not just your one path through it. Uh, but you could certainly think about, well, now that I played through the game once, I know some things, hopefully, as <laughs> so when I go back and replay it again, I might have a, a different experience. Uh, so those are the six basic things to be thinking about as you're preparing to write this essay. Uh, so what will your essay actually look like? And I will say a couple times here, I have some samples. In, if you go to D2L content, look for the sample essays. And those are from previous versions of this class back when it was a, it's, it's a different number, but it's basically the same assignment. And you can take a look at those, get a feel for like, you know, all of those are A essays. Uh, so I'm not saying they're perfect, but you know, it's a pretty good example, pretty good idea of what I'm looking for. And so a lot of people learn well that way, just looking at some samples. So you can certainly do that. Uh, but here I'll just give you a quick breakdown of things I look for. Uh, so I like to start off with the first person account of the game experience from your personal perspective. So again, don't just read the back copy, don't just go to Wikipedia and summarize what's the story of the game or the plot is. Uh, I want to know about your experience. So what happened when you first started the game? Uh, what did you see? Uh, what were you experiencing? You know, basically, if I were to ask you, what, what did you do yesterday? Step me through your day. You say, well, first I woke up, and, you know, and then I, this, this per my roommate said hello. <laughs> you know, you don't have to provide that much detail, but that's kind of the idea. It's just your personal perspective. I'm not asking about what was in the news that day or something like a global narrative, just what happened to you? Uh, two, a little bit about this game world. So as you're, as you're seeing it, you're discovering this world. You're discovering uh, what's happened so far, uh, what's going on at the moment. Uh, usually games will give you some events right off the bat, so you have to start making some decisions about what to do. What's going on in the game as, at that moment? You know, you is this the middle of a party? Are you just waking up? Uh, you know, all the way through the... Uh, rest of the game. Uh, the gameplay mechanics. So what kind of choices are you allowed to make? Can you talk to anybody and say anything? Probably not. Uh, can you, is it a puzzle game? Is it a game where you can destroy things and kill things? <laughs> you know, a lot, there's a lot of variation over games. So you just basically saying, what? how is this game set up? What does it allow you to do? Uh, also, the characters, if there are characters in the game, uh, what are they like? How do they respond to you? Uh, what do you think of them? And so as you're thinking about all this, obviously you're not going to put all of this into your paper. Uh, instead, you want to be thinking about the most powerful or critical moments from that gameplay experience. So it might not be something that happened at the start of the game. You know, it might be something that happened in the middle, towards the end, uh, but just some part of that game when it really just kind of grabbed you you're sort of really engaged and really having some uh, emotional content there. Uh, that's what we want to focus on. And then this is followed. That's going to be the bulk of the paper. And then there will be a, at least a paragraph where you're reflecting on the experience. So and that just means you're thinking about, how do I feel about the choices I made? Do you feel good about it? Do you feel guilty about it? Do you have second thoughts about it? Do you feel confident that you made the right choice? Uh, just how do you feel? Uh, and then go a little deeper than that. So what is that choice, or what do these feelings reveal about the type of person that you are? You might say, well, this, this seems to indicate to me that I'm a very, uh, what's the word, uh, 
Maybe you're very confident. Maybe you're very assertive or aggressive, or you're very impatient. Uh, maybe it reveals that you maybe upon reflection you think that was kind of a selfish thing I did there, or I wasn't really thinking about this other character's feelings. I said it might be very unpleasant things you're discovering about yourself. <laughs> you know that happens. <laughs> Uh, and then how do you feel about these insights that you're gaining through this process? Is it, do you feel like there's maybe you're learning some things you can use as an opportunity, opportunity to grow as a person, as a, as a good citizen, as a good ethical person? Um, maybe you feel like it's just reinfor reinforcing things you already knew. Uh, maybe you're just really not sure what to make of it at all. Uh, maybe you're kind of puzzled. You know, that's, that's a legitimate response to have at this point. Uh, so that's basically the goal here. Uh, the specifics of the assignments. And so as I said, every time you play one of these games or episodes, you'll do a, a rough draft. And this is, uh, you know, by rough, I mean try to make it grammatically correct and coherent, but I'm not really going to be in there trying to copy edit these things. Uh, just looking mainly for uh, that you put the thought into this, that you've done the reflection, <laughs> that you play the game in question. And so I'm looking for about 500 words minimum uh, for these drafts. And uh, you'll step through the, you know, you address the stuff we talked about just then. And then in addition to, to writing your draft, you will go in and look at some of the other drafts from your classmates. These will be posted in the uh, discussion forums at D2L. And so I want you to pick two, try to find two that don't have responses already, and write at least 200 words you know, talk about their experience with them. Uh, see if you can delve a little more, help them uh, delve a little more deeply, give them some ideas for how they might expand this, or parts you found interesting, and just whatever it is, if parts were unclear, uh, anything like that is good material to talk about. And then, uh, uh, two points in this semester at the midterm, and then at the end of the course, we'll have some final versions. Uh, so you'll basically take any two, or any uh, for the midterm, you could take any of the ones you've done up to that point, these rough drafts, and you can say, this was the one I really liked, or this was the one that was the best, uh, whichever one you want, and you'd basically just expand that one, you add some extra words onto it, and then you really do go in and edit this, make it grammatically correct, take it to the right place if you need to do that, uh, but really try to polish that essay uh, into a final version. So you'll submit one of those at midterm, and then again at the end of the semester, uh, you go through the process. You pick a different essay, and then you also turn that into a final version. So there's only two final drafts, but lots of these rough drafts. Okay, so that'll do it uh, for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Please ask me a question or make a comment. Uh, don't forget about those sample essays on D2L. And I'll leave it here and hope to hear from you soon.